This is our last arrhythmia in this section. I can't believe how much we've covered, and I'm hoping things are starting to come a little quicker for you at this stage. Junctional tachycardia. Now, tachycardia makes you think of heart rates greater than 100, and it should. That's why it's tagged on to the word junctional. In this case, the AV node has enhanced automaticity and it's beating at rates greater than 100. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. All right, so junctional tachycardia is the fourth of four rhythms. Here we have an example of junctional tachycardia. Looks pretty regular at first glance, looks like it could be a sinus tachycardia, but what we're seeing is this inverted P wave. Now, if I haven't said inverted P wave enough times for you to associate inverted P wave with junctional rhythms, I haven't done my job, okay? <laughs> that is a classic hallmark. So let's take a look at this in comparison to normal sinus rhythm. Again, it looks fairly deceiving. It could be picked up as a sinus tachycardia by our machines and by people who are not aware of that P wave Everything is regular. We've got a nice, um, it looks like potentially a P wave and then a really weird thing happening before the QRS. It would be, um, it wouldn't be uncommon for people to assume that this is part of the QRS, but really now that you know that this is actually an inverted P wave and there's my first notch onto my QRS wave and then my T wave and inverted P. I know that when I see an inverted P wave before the QRS, that means that, that the atria have been contracting as a result of the stimulus from the AV node before the ventricles contract. That means the signal was sent up faster than the signal was sent down. Question mark, is this sinus tacky? This would be a common misdiagnosis or an SVT. Now we know with an SVT, you won't see any P waves. So we're gonna roll that one out right away. But here we have the commonality with normal sinus rhythm is that we have a regular R to R interval. Uh, sorry, with commonality. Now here we have the commonality with the sinus tachycardia. We have a normal R to R interval. We have a rate that's between 60 and 100 beats per minute. And we have a regular rhythm. Our QRS is narrow. Our QT may be narrow as well because of the rate. We'd have to calculate a QT corrected. But here is that key thing, P wave and PR interval. That PR interval is where the AV node holds on to energy. And in this case, the AV node doesn't have any, any energy to hold on to, and instead it's actually initiating the response. So that interval is shrunk down to less than 0.12 seconds. This is a compromising rhythm because as mentioned in the last section, we lose atrial kick. Atrial kick is when the atria contract and just before there, so this is now we're, this is consistent with the P wave, atria contracts. And when we have that flat line where the AV node is holding on to electricity, the atria go oomph one more time and they just push that last bit of blood out. So when we lose that, our ventricles are not full, so when our ventricles contract, the ejection fraction drops and we're losing cardiac output. If this is caused by digoxin, stop. Wait a minute. Get that digiband and we're gonna give it. I think I just wrote some new lyrics. We wanna bind the digoxin so it loses its efficacy in the body. And if they are symptomatic, we may be giving, we may be asking them to do vagal maneuvers, bear down, see if we can convert the rhythm, try some verapamil to slow the heart rate down, electrolyte replacement if they're hypokalemic. That's it. This is the super short one. And we're going to meet you at the junction where you're going to do your practice and your case studies.